I'm about to show you something new for Intellivision that will revolutionize the way video games are played and compared. First, here's a popular Atari game. Now don't look. And here's new space buttons for the Intellivoice module. Hello, Commander. Starbase One, under attack. The battle is over. New Intellivoice. Now that Intellivision talks, you can tell the difference with your eyes. Hello again, and welcome back to another trip into the history of gaming with Replay Retro. I'm Matt. And this week we return to the Intellivision from Mattel Electronics for a closer look at one of the system's quirky add-on units which attempted to help separate it from its Atari and Coleco competition by creating the first synthesised voices in games. That's right, this week it's the Intellivoice module. In the early 80s, General Instruments created the SP0256 Narrator Speech Synthesizer chip which suddenly created a whole new generation of talking toys, including the famous Speak and Spell from Texas Instruments, and various talking dolls. These quickly became hot stuff, and Mattel, as a large player in the toy industry, were keen to find ways that they too could use this new technology to create their own smash hit bestseller. And because the Intellivision was already based on General Instruments chips, Mattel assigned engineer Ron Carlson to design an add-on for the console which would take advantage of this new market trend for talking toys. Their first challenge would be the limited onboard memory of the narrator chip. With only 2 kilobytes of data storage available, the Intellivoice could only be programmed with a few generic words which would have to be suitable for a large variety of games. Those words include the Mattel Electronics Presents intro from the beginning of all Intellivoice software, as well as a few simple commands like press enter. However, Carlson and his team knew that game-specific voices and phrases would also be needed if the system was to succeed, and so designed the add-on to accept data from external memory. Then, by increasing the amount of data storage space on the game cartridges themselves, extra phrases for specific games could be included on the cartridge. Eventually, after ironing out a number of software teething problems, the add-on was released to the public in 1982 for $100, with three games available on release, including the frantic Bomb Squad. Early orders from retailers were high, but public scepticism limited the actual sales, and even the release of a movie-licensed fourth game, Tron Star Sailor, didn't encourage further sales. A further effort to boost both sales of Intellivoice games and give the system itself a sales advantage over the Atari 2600 came when Mattel decided to give the Intellivoice add-ons away free via post when new customers bought an Intellivision main console. But this tactic also failed to give the system any significant traction in the market. Before we take a look at the final chapter of the Intellivoice itself, Let's take a quick look at the actual hardware and just a couple of the games. This item here then is the Intellivoice voice synthesis module for use with Mattel Electronics Intellivision. And as you can see straight off, the colour scheme is designed to tie in perfectly with the Model 1 Intellivision system. Another Intellivoice was shown in uh, the white and beige type colours to go with the Intellivision 2. That was shown in a catalogue um, but was never actually produced. There aren't even any prototypes of that. The photograph featured in the catalogue was just of a carved block of wood uh, representing what this system would eventually look like. And that's purely because the system didn't do as well as Mattel wanted it to and so they never bothered to release a second version. However, this version while it may not tie in with the colour scheme of the Intellivision 2, is entirely 100% compatible with the Intellivision 2, so you can still use it, that's fine. On the front then here, you'll see there's this little control wheel, and that's simply for the volume of the voice. So you can turn the character voice up or down, depending on how you prefer it. The voice, of course, however, does not come out of the module, as far as I'm aware, anyway. I've never noticed it coming out of the module. It comes entirely out of the TV. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I've never heard anything come out of the module itself. 
On top, nothing really of interest, apart from what looks like it was meant to be a cartridge port at some point. It's an interesting little panel, is that? I've never... I mean, it is entirely decorative, but I've never really understood the reasons behind it. Nothing on the back. On the side there you have a cartridge port, just like the cartridge port on the Intellivision itself, and underneath just what you'd expect. To use the Intellivoice module, and you simply slot it into the cartridge port of your Intellivision, making sure it's nice and snug. There you go, and it sits next to it comfortably. You then take your game cartridge, this is Space Spartans, a specific uh, IntelliVoice cartridge designed for use with the IntelliVoice. Uh, all the IntelliVoice cartridges come in this colour of packaging. They're all yeah, just a little bit different. They all feature this It Talks logo on. And they're all more colourful, I think. I prefer these. When you open the packaging, you see the cartridge, which looks just the same as a normal Intellivision cartridge, but actually contains far, far larger ROM data in there because it includes a few extra voices. That slots into the side here, making sure again it's nice and firm, although I find that I have to lever it out just a little bit or else it doesn't work. I don't know if that's something to do with the contacts on my Intellivoice or if that is a problem that they all have. As usual, you also find an instruction manual, if I can get to that, there it is, Space Spartans. One side is one language if I remember rightly and the other one is another language, although it would appear that Space Spartans actually is English on both sides. That's interesting. On my B-17 bomber manual, you have, if you flip it over, you have a French manual. Right, that's not the same here. Slide that back in. And you also get, as you would expect, your controller overlays. These are reproduction overlays, the originals. Clearly long gone. Which, just as the overlays with the normal in television games, they slot straight into there and show you your context sensitive keys. There you go, so battle computer, impulse drive, etc. Everything's there, your fire buttons and your directional control. With that in, with the IntelliVoice in, and with the game installed, you are ready to play Space Spartans on the IntelliVision using the IntelliVoice voice synthesis module. Mattel Electronics presents Space Spartans. So, as the game just told you, this is Space Spartans. Uh, it plays as kind of a uh, very similar game to Space Battle that we looked at on the Intellivision episode, but it just works better. Okay, now the first thing you do is you place a number of star bases. Now, as you can see, these red well, the, these black marks that are currently on are enemy star bases where your enemy ships will be generated. Uh, the coloured blocks represent what concentration of aliens are in a region. So there's quite a lot here, there's not so many here. A green block would represent there being more. That's where I currently am. And you can see me moving the cursor around as I attempt to place my th three space stations. So let's put one there. I'm going to put them in a row. I find that to be my best tactic. And put one Hello, there. Commander, computer reporting. And now the computer reports. Now you can see from the keypad that I have the ability to control all my ship's systems. That's the battle computer, impulse drive, shields, tracking computer, hyperdrive, repair systems, and a lot of other computer information I can get hold of. So what I will do is I'll check my system status. Hyperdrive off. So that means everything is fine apart from my hyperdrive, which is currently turned off. Hyperdrive will only activate during flight, so let's press hyperdrive and fire it up to go to that alien space station there. Then go to change view and we're in the mode. Six and there's our six aliens that it's just told us about. Check that out, two for one. Another two for one. As the aliens fire at me and hit, they will do damage to my ship's systems, which I can repair in the field unless a system is destroyed. If that system is destroyed, then I have to go to one of my space stations to get it fixed. My space stations can also be attacked, and if they are all destroyed, I lose the game. It's that simple.
This is a very addictive game, I really love this. This is my favourite in television game. We go. Now that Now that all of them are gone. That space station, that enemy space station is also gone. I can see that at the minute the aliens haven't moved towards my space station, so that's good. Let's attack another one of them. Change view into the battle mode. Energy level 9082. I like the fact that this game uses more than one voice. Very good. There's a robot voice, a male voice, and a female, which all signify different things. There you go, so I was just hit, and the computer informed me that one of my computers, I believe it sounded like it was the battle computer, is one third down. If I lose a system, obviously, I don't have that system anymore, so if I lose my shields, then the next hit will kill me and I need to get the hell out. If I lose my impulse drive, I can't control my movement around the screen, and in that situation it is best to hide the drive the hell out of there. One third down. Off. Impulse drive. One third down. Computer. Two thirds down. Second. Destroyed. Time to get out of here, I think. Energy level eight thousand six hundred fifty-nine. Quick. Right, so I'm now at my starbase, so I should get some repairs. Hyperdrive. One third down. Off. So my systems are now being repaired, as you can hear. And I've come to a starbase because that will make the repair quicker. However, all the time I spend out of the fight, the aliens will be rebuilding their forces and preparing to move against me. Okay, all my systems are now working again. So let's head back over here. And re-engage. See if we can take more of them down this time. The game works best if you only move a little bit at a time. Taking a real pounding off these guys. I do like the female voice on this. At the beginning when she says, Hello, Commander, I find that quite sexual. I know that's wrong. Anyway, I think you get the general idea. This is an absolutely brilliant game, and if you have an Intellivision and the Intellivoice module, I highly recommend picking this game up. You will really enjoy it. It's fantastic. Lots of depth for such an early game. Um, lots of control of individual systems. Lots of different tactical ways of playing. This really is a fantastic game. Zero Mattel Electronics presents... Okay, so as tacky as that B17 Bomber is, this is actually another really good game. In fact, to be honest with you, it looks like the Intellivoice games are the best of the Intellivision games. You start off on this screen. You're obviously in England over here, and you have to pick your target somewhere over here. Uh, we're going to go for an air base over here. Okay, we then switch to gauges, where we can bring our plane's engines up to speed. Once we hit 90 miles an hour, we can begin takeoff. We'll start now, I think, by upping the pitch. And if we go back to that map screen, we can see our little dot here. We are now moving towards that target. Go back to the gauges. You can see we're carrying six bombs and you can also see our fuel draining away. So lower the engine speed so that we're not completely dicking that fuel supply. And let's start to level out. Switching to the pilot screen here, you can see that we are flying towards our destination. We can also switch to the 12 o'clock gun sight 
the 3 o'clock gun sight, the 6 o'clock gun sight and the 9 o'clock gun sight. That's for fighting off enemy planes. There you go, you can see our gunfire. Uh, these gun sights can be destroyed by enemy planes. You get three bullet holes across them. Other screens available are the preview screen, which tells us what the target we're heading for looks like. The bomb bay screen, which when you fire a bomb you hear this sound. fire from somewhere. I accidentally dropped a bomb on uh, Britain there, so I will have lost points for that foolishly. In fact, if you check the score screen, yep, I've lost points because I'm a fool and dropped a bomb on Britain. I am a great World War pilot. Oh, we have our first bandit. Where is he? There he is. Yeah, look at that. All you people that say I'm really bad at games, I just shot down a plane. I didn't see you do that. I'm getting nearer our target yet? No, not quite yet. A little bit concerned about my fuel level lasting for this journey. Let's look at Bombay. Is there anything we can drop on it? The map is randomly generated each time, so often you do get an, uh, an enemy base closer to you. Got another one down. over the target soon. Uh -oh. Oops, that was 9 o'clock. There is a problem that you do have to look at the keypad to see. When it, oh, there's our target. Drop bombs. So there you go, we successfully destroy the target. Score goes up. And now we'll set course back to merry old England. The plane will automatically start piling us back. And that is B-17 Bomber for the IntelliVoice. Another fantastic game, definitely worth picking up if you have an IntelliVoice module. You may have noticed that all the games we've mentioned so far, and the ones we've just shown, were made by Mattel themselves, with no third-party developers supporting the IntelliVoice add-on. This was because of the complex way in which voice data had to be created, which put off most developers. This limited the games library and therefore also limited the market appeal of the add-on unit. The cost of adding extra data storage space to the cartridges for this supplementary voice data also had a major impact on the shelf price of the voice compatible games, pushing them up to almost double that of the standard carts, further discouraging parents to buy these games for their children. By mid-1983, Mattel had given up on the IntelliVoice. All involved personnel were either dismissed or moved elsewhere. 
And the Intellivoice 2, seen in catalogues to look better next to the redesigned Intellivision 2, was never even prototyped. Only two games remained in development, and only one of those actually saw a release. That game was World Series Major League Baseball, and by the time it was released, it was changed so that it didn't even need the Intellivoice. After only a year on the market, the Intellivoice was gone, and video gaming's first real attempt at bringing synthesised speech into our living rooms had come to an end. Later, the Commodore VIC-20 would use a similar chip to synthesise speech, as would the Odyssey 2 with its The Voice expansion module, neither of which were really much more successful than the Intellivoice had been. These days, gaming uses voice actors rather than synthesising speech, mostly because of how much more data we can fit into games these days. And so this whole era is little more than a curiosity in gaming's past. That's all for this week, but remember to keep in touch with the show by following us on Twitter, and give that like button a stab if you enjoyed what you saw today. See you again next time on Replay Retro.